Hi, welcome to another session of circuits and networks. In today's transient analysis classes, we are going to see the derivation of transient current equation for RLC circuit. So here you can see we have DC connected to RLC. In our previous classes, we have seen the initial conditions, the initial behavior of inductor and capacitor when the switch is closed. Immediately, the switch is closed. So we have taken T is equal to zero plus as the immediate condition. And before that, before means, before the switch is not closed, we have taken the condition as T equal to zero minus. So those things we have seen in our previous classes. In this class, we are going to see the derivation of transient current. So when the switch is closed, the current starts flowing and the drop will be obtained across RLC parameters. So that current we are treating here as transient current. So let us begin with the analysis. So once the switch is closed, the V in is connected to the passive elements and the current starts flowing. So I'm going to employ Kirchhoff's voltage law in order to find out the transient current. So how do you do that? So you can see here, as the switch is closed, this input supply voltage will be equal to Ri plus the drop across inductor is LDI by DT and the drop across capacitor is 1 by C integral I DT. So we are going to frame this equation as 1 and then I'm going to differentiate equation 1. So when I'm going to differentiate equation 1 with respect to T, I'm going to get R DI by DT plus L D square I by DT square plus I by C equal to 0. Why? Because here V in is the DC input voltage, so derivation of constant is 0. I hope you understood how we got frame this equation from equation 1. Now let us make small changes in this equation. So I am taking D square I by DT square on this side and I am taking this L from D square I by DT square and I am going to take this L to the denominator of R as well as denominator of I. So it becomes R by L dI by dt plus I by LC equal to 0. So this is a replication of second order differential equation. Equation 2 is called as second order differential equation. In order to find out the solution for second order differential equation, we have to go with the engineering mathematics uh, which is available in BTEC first year syllabus. So in that Engineering mathematics, you have to go with partial differentiations. In that, you will get the solution for second order differential equation. So, here we have to take the help of auxiliary or characteristic equation, which is obtained as S square plus R by L S plus 1 by L C equal to 0. So, we are going to take this equation 3 and we have to find out the rules for this equation. So S, S1 and S2 are the roots of this equation where S1 is obtained as minus R by 2L plus under root of R by 2L square minus 1 by LC. Now this is obtained with the help of the solution what we are going to employ as minus B plus or minus under root of B square minus 4AC folded by 2 into A. That formula we have used and this will give you root 1 whose value is S1. Similarly, you are going to get another root S2 which is equal to minus R by 2L minus under root of R by 2L whole square minus 1 by L. So these are the two roots of equation 3. It's a basic mathematics, you can easily solve it. Let us frame S1 in terms of alpha that is minus alpha plus under root of alpha square minus omega naught square what is this omega naught? Actually, omega naught it is 1 by under root LC. This we have already seen in our previous classes. You can visit to transient analysis classes as well as the basics of AC circuits. How to find out the value of omega naught? It is also seen in the resonance concept. So, that is why we have changed 1 by LC root as omega naught. So, this entire value is nothing but omega naught square. Similarly, you can get the value of S2 in terms of minus alpha minus under root alpha square minus omega naught square. In fact, I am going to change this value to 
minus alpha plus beta, where beta will be the replacement of this under root value. Similarly, minus alpha minus beta, where alpha is r by 2l, this is clear, and beta is under root of alpha square minus omega naught square, where omega, as I told you, it is equal to 1 by under root lc. With this, we can obtain the solution, mathematical solution as i of t is equal to k1 e to the power of s1 t plus k2 e to the power of s2 t. Now, this is the solution for this equation 3. Okay. Let us frame this equation as 4, where k1, k2 are the constants to be determined and s1, s2 are the roots of the characteristic equation. Also, depending on the values of alpha and omega naught, we can frame three cases of response. What are those cases? We will see. Case 1, if alpha is greater than omega naught. If alpha is greater than omega naught, it is obvious that r by 2l is greater than 1 by under root lc. For this, the roots will become real and unequal and the system gives an over damped response. So, the solution will be given by i of t is equal to k1 e to the power of s1 t plus k2 e to the power of s2 t. Now, for t greater than 0, the response is obtained in this fashion. You can see the curve is bulged and somewhat it is slow in decaying and it is going like this. So, this waveform is known as the waveform of transient current under over damped response. So, that is our case 1. In case 2, if alpha is, is equal to omega naught, if alpha is equal to omega naught, then r by 2l is equal to 1 by under root lc and the roots here will become real and equal and the system gives critical damped response. So, the solution is given by i is equal to e to the power of minus alpha t with k1 plus k2 t per t greater than 0. This is directly derived from engineering mathematics under partial differentiation. You can go with that chapter in mathematics and you can get easily this solution. So, how, how the response would be? So, the, how the response is in this fashion. You can see the critically damped condition, the waveform has gone to the peak and it has come to the rest. Okay. So, this is the waveform for transient current under critical damped response. In case 3, when alpha is less than omega naught, r by 2l will be less than 1 by under root lc and the roots are complex conjugate and thus the system gives an under damped response. Now, this analysis you can see also in control systems. We are going to study about the behavior of the system. That is a different topic and different chapter in a different subject in electrical engineering where again you are going to see all these basics and we are going to study in depth about the behavior of the system, whether the system is balanced or not. Okay. So, the, for this, again we have to frame the general equation and roots are nothing but minus alpha plus or minus under root, alpha square plus omega naught square. Now, I am taking alpha square minus omega naught square under root value is equal to, I am taking just minus outside, so minus 1, under root of minus 1 outside and omega naught it comes to the primary stage, so it becomes omega naught square minus alpha square. Now here, under root of minus 1 it is taken as j and this value is taken as omega d, where j is nothing but equivalent to minus 1, under root of minus 1 and omega d, it is the damped root response, that is why it is under damped condition. So, this is damped root response which is equal to under root of omega naught square minus alpha square. So, with this what happens? The solution becomes e to the power of minus alpha t, k1 e to the power of j omega d t plus k2 e to the power of minus j omega d t. Now, here one term, here one term, I can take this one term and divide into two terms, means what? I can take e to the power of j omega d t 
by 2 plus e to the power of j omega dt by 2 as two terms, 1 is divided into two halves. Similarly, e to the power of minus j omega dt can be divided into two parts. So you can see, I have divided into two parts and I have taken k1, k2 on positive real part as well as imaginary real part. Why we have done this? Because you can easily frame this equation in terms of cos and sine. So e to the power of j omega dt plus e to the power of minus j omega dt whole divided by 2, it becomes a cos term. And this becomes a sine term. And thus, for under damped condition, we are going to get e to the power of minus alpha t. You can see k1, k2 are taken on the outside. And this has changed to cos omega dt. And this imaginary part has changed to j, k1 minus k2 sine omega dt. So it's a basic mathematics you can follow. So for t greater than 0, this you can see the terms are involved with cos and sine. So the waveform, it gets slowly decayed and it comes to rest. So this is the special waveform for under damped condition. So in today's class we have seen the behavior of transient current under three responses. That is for over damped condition, for critically damped condition, for under damped condition. The applications of this analysis we are going to see in the concept of control systems as well as power electronics, which we are going to see in the future. I hope you like this class. Please share among your friends, subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.